What's going on, people? Troops TV. Back again. You understand? Back again. Episode 38, Eight. if I'm correct. Episode 38. Uh, big up my brother Zar, as oh, every oh. week. My brother Jet's on the buttons. Um, he's doing up player ratings at the moment. You get me? My producer on job blood. You understand? Um, <clears throat> we have a... A special guest for you uh, this week. Uh, later on in the show, in the pod, uh, MLS star Cole Bassett, uh, Colorado Rapids star, uh, one of the one of the main young G's coming through in this thing in the MLS and for American football. Uh, he joined Troops and Zar uh, this week on the show. Uh, we'll get into that a bit later on. But um, <clears throat> before we start um, where we need to start, which is in Greece, um, just want to reiterate uh, the comments that we made on the last episode uh, was our fuckery. Uh, you get me? Uh, the banter was uh, taken over uh, the line. Um, we put out a video before the watch along um, explaining um, our, our thoughts and how we feel. And apologizing basically to Mel and any film and any female uh, that took offense to the comment that I made. You get me? Um, so just to reiterate that, uh, apologies going out to all the ladies in the world uh, who thought uh, the the joke was taken uh, too far. Uh, <clears throat> now let's move on to the main talking point. You get me? Arsenal taking on Benfica. Second leg of the uh, round of 32 Europa League fixture. 1-1 one, one was the first uh, game's uh, finish. It's how it finished, 1-1. One, one. We did get the away goal. Uh, that game took place in the Stadio Olimpico, Roma and Lazio's home stadium. Our game took place in Greece, <clears throat> um, the Olympiakos Stadium. Arsenal 3, Benfica 2. The season is still alive. We the Lord. are still alive. Uh, just about, we have to be real, just about alive. Uh, we were swimming with the fishes. We were swimming with the piranhas. But now we are swimming with the dolphins. <laughs> we are in a safe spot now <laughs> in the sea. You understand? Doing up Sebastian uh, under the sea, <laughs> under, under the, the sea. sea. You get me? Doing up crab life. <laughs> you get me? Crabs in a bucket. <laughs> we were nearly, it was like crabs in a bucket, blood. Niggas uh, were fighting to try to get out of the fucking, <laughs> you understand? Nah, no, fuck it, oh, man. Save till the round of 16, then we'll be swimming against the tide again. <laughs> you get me? <laughs> fucking hell, mate. But um, the lineup um, had me happy and disappointed. I was happy because I saw. Gabriel, Tierney, uh, Saka, uh, Abameyang, Smith Rowe, but not in the position where I want to see him. Odegaard, uh, weren't really happy with Bellerin, and I wasn't happy with Smith Rowe being on the left hand side. So the lineup was Leno in goal, back four of Bellerin, Louise, Gabriel, and Tierney. So Bios and Jacko were the pivot. Saka, Odegaard, and Smith Rowe were behind Abama, Bloodsla, Yang. On the bench, Laka, Willian, Cedric, Partey, Pepe, Chambers, Mario, Nenny, and Ketia, Ryan, Martinelli, and Carl Jakob Hein. What was your thoughts on the lineup? If I'm being completely honest, before the game, I actually liked the lineup. I liked where Smith Rowe was. I did not expect him. This is before the game. This is before the game. I liked. I, I didn't mind him being on the wing. I didn't expect for him to have as awful of a defensive performance as he did. So I was just happy for him to be playing. He's one of my players. I... Uh, I thought maybe we might have needed more protection in the midfield, which is why in my starting lineup before uh, on the previous pod, I picked El Nini to, to, to play. He, he provides a bit more defensive stability, which it, <coughs> during the game it, it seemed like, but Partey, Partey came on and he wasn't fit. So I, overall, I was very happy, very happy in the beginning just to, 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 to see the lineup. I thought, I thought yeah, Arteta picked a good lineup. I was a bit like, mm, you get me. But the game started... 
Uh, we made a bit of a shaky start, if we're being totally honest. Made a bit of a shaky start. Uh, we had to grow into the game. And if we're being totally honest, the game, uh, the game, the goal came on um, the run of Vaughan. You get me? The, run of, the, the way the game was going, the game came, the game, the goal came out of nowhere. You understand? Lovely ball from Bakayo Saka. Like, that's it. That's Fantastic it ball. Uh, by my blood Clark Yang with a confident finish. Very confident finish. Uh, nice little dink. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't expect him to take it like that. The kind of form he's been on in recent weeks for the whole season, to be honest, blood. You get me? But he has that capability. He has the capability to do that. You understand? Mm -hmm. He's got that in his locker. You understand? Which is why I always say to people, like, don't turn on him, bro. Like, criticize if you want. That's calm. But don't, like, come with this stupid talk. We need to sell him this, that, da, 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 da. Remember what he's done and remember what he can do. Form you is temporary, me? class is permanent, right? That is the same, blood. You understand? And then, like, you get me? The game was. I mean, just going along nicely. I mean, no real threat uh, from Benfica. And then a, um, a lazy challenge uh, from Ceballos. You get me? Just a lazy challenge. And you get me? Uh, Diogo uh, Goncalves put Leno in a spliff, blood. Mm -hmm. You get me? Leno had no chance at saving that. And I even said, like, before... The build up, like when 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 my man was putting the ball down mm. and getting ready to take the fucking the free kick, mm -hmm. I was saying that Spanish and Portuguese Spanish, players, Spanish, Portuguese, Brazilians, you some don't Italian, give them set pieces. you don't get their man there any form of chance around the box, blood from a set piece, fam. You understand? And you saw the capability of the man, blood. No keeper saving that. You understand? No keeper is saving that, blood. Top bins, top bins, blood. You get me? Fantastic finish, blood. Have to be real. We've gone in at halftime 1-1. One, one. You get me? Another goal we conceded just before halftime. Yet again, concentration levels are not there. Not good enough. I said um, during the halftime break to you, I said to you, yo, this is Arteta's biggest halftime team talk mm -hmm. of his career, blood. Of his short managerial career, this is the biggest team talk, blood. Mm. Because if this goes left, you can go left as well, blood. You get me? Because literally, this is the only chance we have to get back to the promised land, which is UEFA Champions League football. You get me? And the second half started. <clears throat> nothing really in the game. You get me? Benfica made two changes. We're still sitting there, no changes. And then a hopeful ball down, down the pitch. Lance a bios. And after making... The first mistake of giving them the opportunity to do stuff from the free kick. This Wallad tries to head the ball back to Leno, blood. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you thinking, bro? Like, what what are you thinking, blood? Like, is is one of your cousins is one of your cousins playing for fucking Benfica? You you you, you, got, you got a bet on the game. He has come out and 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 said that you get me. He apologizes for the mistake. The mistake, yeah. He has come out. So fair play to him. You get me? He's come out and he's manned up and he's took it. But still blood. Yeah. That is absolute stupidness. There's no pace on the ball, yeah? So why the fuck are you trying to go back? Why are you not heading the ball forward? Why are you trying to go back to Leno? Yeah, I don't know. He, he got it. I mean, they, they showed another angle of the incident. He just got from the ball when it was kicked by the goalkeeper. He just did not get have a read of the flight at all at any point, at any stage and point of that, uh, it that was, whole sequence. It was a fucking, <coughs> it's a fucking joke, blood. I'm sitting there and I'm like, brother, are you fucking serious? Like, that's why I was there like, mm. no, no, this did, no, mm -hmm. no, this can't be happening, blood. Not this stupidity, blood. Do you understand? We're, we're, we're in the fucking game, blood. Like, what are you dealing with, bro? What are you, like, what are you doing? You get me? And then we're 2-1 down. Big credit to Leno in that situation, though. Yeah, because Huge I saw. Huge credit to Leno. I saw, um, I saw the madness. Huge. I saw a clip um, from the AFTV live stream. Uh, big up the man then from AFTV. Oh, the, you get me? <laughs> the gaffer. Yeah, yeah, big up the man then from... And I see gaffer losing his shit, <laughs> but I see gaffer saying Kalechi's chatting a lot of shit. Um, me and Kalechi have had arguments like that where I think he's chatting shit, you get me? But more time I, more time I agree with gaffer, I actually agree with Kalechi this time. Yeah. Of one of the few occasions I agree with Kalechi. Because I, even I was saying that I think Leno made the right choice. Not, 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 not. You get me? Not, not doing that, blood. You know, gaffer was kind of saying that... Um, he should stay he should in his box. Stay in his box. But you get me. He's staying in his box is making it easier for the man. He's come out. He's tried to. He's tried a thing. 
He's not taking him out. Mm-hmm. You get me? You can't you, you can't blame Leno for that. You yeah. blame Sabayos for that. Yeah. You can't get on Leno for that. Sabayos has put him in that predicament. There we go. How Len- the fuck Len- are you Len- going to coming out to save? Do you understand? Uh, save Sabayos. Like, I love I love Gaffer blood. Mm. I love Gaffer blood. Mm-hmm. But that I can't agree with that. Mm-hmm. I always me and Gaffer more time. We have the same kind of thought process. Mm-hmm. You get me? But I can't really agree with that one. I, I have to I have to stand with Kalechi on that one. I think Leno did make the right choice. You have to put blame on fucking Sabayos. You get me? Maybe he had Paello on his mind or something. You get me, Bacar? He drinks Estrella, mm-hmm. he's, he's paella. paella. Yeah. Maybe maybe he had an Estrella at half time, blood. And he was a little wavy. Estrella is beer. Mm. You understand? It's a Spanish beer, if you never knew. Maybe he had a maybe had maybe he had a few pints of Estrella. Um Estrella in, instead of having a few sips of the water, water. blood. You get me, Bacar? Man, that was like some drunk behavior there, blood. Some drunk behavior, blood. To say the least, fam. You get me? And then you're looking for a goal. You're looking for two goals because 2-1, we're going out. You get me? They have two away goals. We scored one. They are going out. Even if we make it 2-2, they're still going through mm. on away goals. You get me? You see Willian and Partey coming on. Now, Partey, I was with because I thought the midfield was looking very, very poor. Uh, they were just breaking through us. They had a lot of space. And that's that's the problem. We were, we were giving them too much space. Allowing them to play their passing game and, and get a bit of momentum going, you get me, and find this, find their way into the find their way into the lead. And when I saw William, I feared the worst blood. <laughs> like you were cussing, <laughs> you uh, were going after him because, like, uh, what we've seen from this man, mm. yeah, and in recent weeks, how we've seen him come off the bench and he's done fuck all. Blood. No impact. No you get me. He's lost the ball. He's come off the bench and lost the ball more times than players that have played longer period of time on the pitch and you've committed more errors blood so mm. obviously i didn't really have any confidence in willie and i really didn't believe he was gonna do fuck all blood mm. but if i'm being totally honest that man changed the game yeah completely that man changed the game blood lovely ball in to tierney gone oh no I was, I was gonna mention that i believe his first sequence if i remember correctly in the game was a cross that was blocked and you went first man. even harder it's like yep. oh he's coming first man yeah. first man because <laughs> yeah. it was like, like he was in the box. I was like, oh because I was God. like, brother, you're in the box yeah. and you still can't and he hits, hits the first hits man. The first man. <laughs> and then his second piece, his, his second involvement in the game, uh, was that uh, great assist, assist to, for to Kieran for Kieran Tierney. You get me? Um, the passion in that kid's eyes, blood. You mm. get me? It was just like it was like looking at me or you on or any other Arsenal fan on the pitch when he scored that blood. For me, he should be future captain. What do you think? Yeah, oh, no, definitely, most, most, most definitely. It's, it's as you said, you, you described it well. It's, 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 it's a fan being on the field, and those guys should be, should be rewarded. He's a high, uh, ride, he, ride or die for the club. He gets what it means to play for a big club. He's played for Celtic. Celtic, no matter if you say Scottish League, Celtic is a big club in world amongst football. Amongst blood. Us. It is a monster in world football, blood, and he knows what it means to play for a big club, which is why I kind of get why Tierney just kind of rises to mm-hmm. the occasions when Arsenal. And also his characteristics when he's playing, he's one of those high industry guys that's always up and down the touch uh, touch line and all that, and you need, he's an example guy too, so perfect leader. But at 2-2, the race is eight, is back again. Yep. Oh, and it's picking up. And it's picking up. <laughs> Jetski's going one-on-one with it. <laughs> Look at that, Jetski's playing. <laughs> Jetski's <laughs> Jetski's losing. Jetski just punched the radiator. Jetski just punched the radiator. Le- oh Jetski my god! Not- you almost dropped the cup on the fucking bro. thing, bro. <laughs> you don't give a fuck, blood. Jetski, it's telling blood. <laughs> but you get me at two two. We were still going out. You get me. Benfica was still going through on away goals. Um, they were trying to sit back. They were trying to hold the ball. We were kind of sitting off them. You were getting a bit mad. Yeah, I, I, I was, I was. To be, I'll be fair and honest. I, I had zero faith. Whereas me, I was like. Big Cat's chatting this shit about, oh, I believed. You could tell that I believed. Because you could tell I was saying to you, Zah, I like this. The whole, before I the was... goal come, I was saying, Zah, I like this. Because we're on the edge of the box and we're not going back. We're just going sideways forward. We're trying to go forward side. We're trying to get uh, in. And I kept seeing it. I was like, I like it. Yo, nah. nah. I'm saying, yeah, bro, I like nope, this, bro. Nope. And then we worked it with Willian. Never worked. Came another way. Never worked. Went to fucking the goal. And the goat just sat nav. The goat just sat nav blood. You get me? Destination about my blood clot young. Boom! <laughs> you, <laughs> my get, post. you get me? Right on his head. You understand? Like, fucking hell, mate. The scenes in the fucking gambling cave. The scenes all around the <sighs> world, mate. Like, every guna. Like, that's that 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 game. That game describes Arsenal yeah. Football Club in a fucking nutshell, blood. Man. Highs and lows. 
you're up, you're down, you don't know where you're going, <laughs> you're going round and round, you do, you're doing that Kylie Minogue spinning around, you don't know what's going on, blood. You get me? And oh my god, blood. yeah, no, it's not great. We are through, fam. You get me? And we are fucking through, blood. Uh, obviously, we're filming this after the pod. Mm. The draw is tomorrow. <clears throat> um, few big teams have gone out. Uh, before we... Yeah, I'm going to go to it now. Um, actually, Emmy, go to... Oh, before we leave Arsenal this. real quick. No, I'm not leaving Arsenal. Oh, okay, okay, go on. Sorry, go on, sorry. what are you going to say? Oh, no, I was going to sneak in the Leno. Leno, 100 appearance. Big shout out to him, man. Been, been pretty solid. Yeah, Leno making his... 100th appearance uh, for the club. Um, bit of a shame that he couldn't get a clean sheet in his 100th uh, game, but he got a win. You get me. That's all that counts. Which is, which is all that counts, blood. You get me. Um, I always big up Saka, blood. You get me. I'm going to give you Saka's stats from the game. 100% aerials won. Yeah, so aerial jewels, he won 100% of the jewels. It's like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, he's smaller than that. He's like 5'7", bro. Really? Yeah, he's smaller than me, bro. I'm 5'9". He's like 5'7", bro. 5'8". He's like 5'7", bro. 57 touches. 92% passing accuracy. Five touches in the opposition box. Two tackles. Two ball recoveries. Two shots. Two shots on target. Two chances created. Two assists. In other words, he's too good. <clears throat> you understand? Mm. Uh, Bakayo, Bakayo Saka has now provided eight assists in the Euro, uh, Europa League since the start of last season. No player in the competition has provided more in that time frame. Kieran Tierney's goal was his first shot on target for Arsenal in the Europa League. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Willian's assist was just his fifth touch after coming on after coming off the bench for Arsenal. Oh, okay. You see? I'm not I I, I give you the Willian stat as well, blood. <laughs> I could I, I could have hit that blood. Do you understand? But um I I give you the stat blood. You understand? Um a stat for Arteta. Uh, Arsenal have now failed to keep a clean sheet in five of their six UEFA Europa League games. UEFA Europa League home games, sorry, under Mikel Arteta. Their only clean sheet at the Emirates was against Don Dolk. Jesus. And we have played some... Clubs I don't even know. They, I don't even know how to pronounce their names. Dog shit team. Like, how the hell are they scoring every single time against us? We're going to have to toughen up defensively if we want to go far in this tournament, if we want to win this tournament. You get me, Bakar? There's still some big teams in it. Uh, a, bit, a, a team that's not big who's still in it is Tottenham. Uh, they went through... Oh, sorry. Suck, suck, suck is taller than we both thought, by the way. He's 5'10". Is he? He yep. looks short, blood. Um, he might be my height then, so I might be 5'10". Because he looks short. <laughs> when I saw him, he weren't taller than me, bro. So I'm like, huh? Um, like I said, a, a, a team that's... Oh, no, they're not big, but they're still in it. But they are a bit of a threat because of the rivalry. Tottenham, uh, they beat Wolfsburg 4-0. 8-1 on aggregate, blood. Uh, Deli Ali. Getting himself a goal, Gareth Bell getting himself a goal, and uh, Vinu uh, Vinicius it's getting two, himself two. You, you saw Daly's? Yeah. Thank you. Boom. Nice finish from Peanut Head. Uh, Ajax uh, beating Leo two one, uh, taking them to four, <clears throat> taking them through four two on aggregate. Uh, Clarsen and Neres with the goals for uh, uh, Ajax. Uh, Yaziku had made it one one before Neres got the late winner for the Dutch side. A bit of a, sh a big, big shock. Napoli, Napoli. Uh, are out. Uh, thank fuck for that. Uh, even though we we played, uh, the last time we played them, we did knock them out in the Europa League. I don't want to play them again. They are difficult opposition. Uh, they actually won 2-1, but uh, the goal from Granada is what took Granada through to the next round 3-2 on aggregate Granada go through. Shakhtar Donetsk, uh, they won 1-0 against Maccabi Tel Aviv, uh, taking them through 3-0 on aggregate. Rangers, 
Uh, they are also through, uh, beating Antwerp 5-2 at Ibrox, uh, making it 9-5 on aggregate. Obviously, uh, we beat Benfica 3-2. We go through 4-3 on aggregate. Um, Hoffenheim, uh, they go out. Uh, Molder go through. Uh, Ole, um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, former team. Molder go through 5-3 on aggregate. Villarreal, where our former manager, Unai Emery, is managing. He has taken the Spaniards through. 2-1 on the night against Salzburg. 4-1 on aggregate. Now, a shock um, has gone down. Another shock, should I say, because Napoli is a shock. Leicester City have lost 2-0 uh, at home to Slavia Prague, which means they go out of the Europa League 2-0 on aggregate. But there were a lot of changes, and I think Leicester are concentrating on and us yeah, on the weekend. Because that is, you get me, they're doing quite, quite well in the... Uh, in the uh, Premier, League. Premier League. So, you get me. They uh, will think that's a bigger, bigger, bigger fish to fry is the word we're looking for. But Leicester are out. Slavia Prague go through 2-0 on aggregate. AC Milan, uh, they go through on away goals. Uh, it finished 1-1 at the San Siro. Uh, they played uh, Crevena Zovida. Uh, Zovezda, whoever they are, bro, no disrespect. Uh, it was 2 2 at Krina's ground and then 1 1. So the Italian Giants go through <clears throat> on away goals. Uh, Dynamo Kiev are also through. Uh, they beat Club Bruges 1 0 on the night, 2 1 on aggregate. Man United, uh, obviously, they won the first leg 4 0. Uh, a bit of a boring game at Old Trafford 0 0, but they were already through with the four away goals. Roma, uh, they will be a problem. In this uh, tournament, they are a, a threat. We have to look out for them. Uh, they took on Portuguese opposition as well. Uh, they beat Braga 3-1 at the Stadio Olimpico, which takes them through 5-1 on aggregate. Uh, Leverkusen. Uh, good to see Leverkusen are out. Uh, sad for my fellow Jamaican Leon Bailey, but happy because they're a real <laughs> fucking threat. Uh, young boys beat them 2-0 uh, away from home, taking young boys through 6-3 on aggregate. Uh, Dynamo Zagreb where Eduardo played his football. Uh, they have beaten Krasnodar 1-0 on the night in Zagreb, taking them through 4-2 on aggregate. And PSV Eindhoven uh, have uh, won on the night 2-1 against Olympiakos, but they go out 5-4 on aggregate. The Greeks go through to the round of 16. So there are a few teams in there that uh, we should be avoiding. Uh, I personally would love it if we got Rangers. Oh, really? I'd love it, it if we got Rangers. Um, Scottish. You get me? It's just a shame that um, I think at the time when the games played, fans would not be allowed in. I'd love to go up to Ibrox. I've never been to Ibrox. I've been to Celtic Park. So, oh, okay, uh, yeah. Man. Never been to Ibrox. I'd love to go to Ibrox and experience it. But, um, and the traveling as well. It's close travel, blood. You get me? Yeah, Scotland. Same, same, same you understand? Fucking, I, we ain't got to do no far flights. Yep. And, do you understand? And all them thing there. Um, teams we want to avoid. Um, Roma. Roma. Milan. Milan. United. United. Oh, Tottenham. Tottenham. Uh, Villarreal. Villarreal. Because Unai. Oh, he. He's... <laughs> I guarantee, yeah. I Troops. guarantee we're gonna get Villarreal. Troops. We're gonna get Villarreal. Troops. We're gonna get Villarreal. Fuck. We're gonna get Villarreal. And if we get them, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared, bro. But we're definitely getting Villarreal. Because Unai is the Europa King. Remember, he's the Europa King, bro. He won three in a row yeah, or something, I swear. Uh, yeah, we're getting Villarreal. Do you know what? I'm, I'll tell you shit. straight. We're getting Villarreal or Tottenham. I can see it already, blood. <clears throat> I can see it already, Black. I want young boys. <laughs> I want Rangers, Black. I want I Rangers. Young boys. If John wants young boys, <laughs> let us know in the comments <laughs> who you lot want, Black. <laughs> you get me? I don't. I am, brother. Oh, my days. I know we're going to get Villarreal. That's going to be oh. fucking peak, bro. Uh, there were some Champions League games as well this week. Uh, we have to big up Chelsea, Black. You get me? They went to Atletico Madrid. We all know what Atletico are on this year, and we all know how difficult place how, how difficult uh, arena mm. stadium it is to go to the uh, the metropolitan you get me i've been there 
and I held the L, fam. You get me? You're up, you're up high as mm. well, and they put the net in, so it's hard to even see. You gotta be doing oh, Meza true, Ozil. Yeah. Oh damn, you be doing that Ozil blood, just fucking binoc- binoculars and them thing there, blood. I know it's I know it's pronounced binoculars, but I pronounce it <laughs> binoculars, blood. Do you understand? But Olivier Donkey Donkey Kong Giroud. He scored another goal, what another goal. An, another great goal. Fuck his Let's move. That's, that's enough. Let's move on now. <laughs> uh, Bayern Munich, the champions of uh, the reigning European champions. Sorry, uh, they went away in their first leg and absolutely put Lazio in a spliff blood. Four one. Bayern should be through. Uh, Real Madrid, my sorry, Spanish quick, quick boys. Take away from that is that young one of the scorers is that young seventeen year old English kid that uh, you just lost to lost to the Germans. Musi, Musi Ali, I believe. He's, he's the hardest player. Oh, Jamal. Jamal. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jamal. Yeah. Yep. Mus- another an, an, another youngster. You get me? We, we had Jude go out there for uh, but, uh, Jude Dortmund. Bell- Dortmund. You get me? Bell- Sancho's out there. Mm-hmm. We saw Reese go out there. We saw Smith Rowe go out man. there. Yep. Now we've got uh, Jamal out there as well doing his thing. Big up your damn self. Hold he, your chest high. He unfortunately has declared for Germany. So I don't blame him. Yeah. He wants to win. <laughs> you get me? So it is what it is, blood. My Spanish boys, Real Madrid, uh, they won 1 0 away at Atalanta. Uh, Ferland Mendy with the goal. And City have made it, what, 20 now? We was 19, innit? We were 19, innit? Yeah, we were yeah. 19 in a row. They've now made it 20 in a row. Uh, they went away to Much and Gladbach Gladbach. and got the 2 0 uh, victory. The assist from. Uh, Cancelo, Cancelo, bro, for both, blood. Because even the one that he gave to Bernardo, Bernardo when he headed across Set to, to Jesus, it's just unbelievable, blood. And Cancelo, oh yeah, he did pass the ball for it was for him the Jesus that, yeah, goal. Yeah, 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 yeah he was involved the heavily. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were some uh, Premier League <clears throat> where there was one. Tell a lie. There were two Premier League fixtures this week. Obviously, the Monday night fixture, the derby that I uh, inform Zara about. Brighton taking on. Crystal Palace. Now, for Benteke to score that goal, yeah, in the 95th minute in a derby, yeah? Let me tell you something. You know, like, he will go into folklore mm. for Crystal Palace. Yeah. He will be a Crystal Palace legend forever. If you des- There's things that can make you a legend at a club. If you do something in a derby, it's instant last legendary minute. status, blood. Instant. Mm. Like, Aubameyang, last minute Tottenham, when he missed the penalty. If you look at the vlog, yeah, that I did that game, I'm saying this is your chance to be an instant yeah. legend. You score Undoubted. this, you are God. Mm-hmm. Arsenal fans will do whatever for mm-hmm. you, blood. Obviously, you get me. It never went the way we wanted. But he still is a legend because he went on to win us the FA Cup. You get me? And he's done great things for us since. It's just a shame that there weren't no fans in the crowd, man. That actually sucks. The FA Cup, but- in it? The uh, no the, the 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 Crystal Palace for the goal for the Benteke. Oh for yeah the, yeah for because they were up, bro. They the away it. end. That's what I'm saying. The you away deserve. end, yeah, bro. They would have had to keep the Palace fans in yeah. and then make the Bris make the Brighton fans go. So because bro, it would have kicked off. Mm. Especially that goal, Palace fans would have even been even they would have been on it. Like even Brighton would be on it because they lost. But even Palace, they'll be gassed. They'll be gassed, blood. Just Telling you. such a shame. As mm-hmm. a fan, you deserve that moment, mm-hmm. and you not uh, mm-hmm. for them not to be there. It's such a shame. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fuck Rona, isn't it? <laughs> and then the midweek game because obviously the Monday night game that was uh, part of the uh, fixture list for the weekend the midweek game went down at Ellen Road Leeds 3 Southampton nil, which moved us into the, the bottom, bottom half of the table. table Leeds move up to 10th one point ahead of us in 11th on 34 points this is just embarrassing. Leeds United have won more games than us in the Premier League and it's fucking February. It's just fucking embarrassing, mate. But, um, yeah, now that we've gone through the fixtures of midweek, let us dive into the weekend fixtures. But before we dive into those weekend fixtures, let's go to my dude, Cole. We got a special guest, blood. You get me? This is my bro, Cole Bassett. You understand? You lot will know him. You get me? Plays for Colorado Rapids. Colorado's finest. It's a pleasure to get him on the show. You get me? He's actually like the first, the first real celebrity guest. Mm-hmm. You get me? Because he is a celebrity. 
Bro, you're a celebrity, bro. You understand? Man, man's doing an American squad now on them thing there. You get me? You're not even doing an under 23s. You're the main guy, bro. Main you understand? We, we, we have to. We have to pick you up every time, blood. And thank you for coming on, man. Seriously, man. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad to be on here with you guys. It's It's been a while since we talked to you, so. That's what I'm saying, man. You get me? I met Cole when I went out to um, Colorado. When we Dude, was they doing, played us, right? Doesn't yeah, they? we was doing the preseason yep. tour. And... Um, I was who was I, who I was with someone and then they were like, "Yo, um, I, th- there's this guy. He plays for Colorado. He watches like AFTV at the time. Yeah. Like, he watches AFTV." Da, 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 da. I was like, "Ross, where down he plays for them?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> I was like, "Raw." And then they showed like we followed each other on the gram, yeah. and then literally as I walked into the ground, he's warming up right at the bottom. Uh-huh. Like, right. I see him. I was like, I was doing fanboy. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I was like, "Hey, Cole!" Hey, Cole. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, Cole!" Like. Robbie didn't even believe me. Robbie was like, "You're chatting, you're chatting wet, blood. Uh, like, you, you you don't know no MLS guy." And then I met his his, his um his, his um teammate Jonathan uh-huh. Lewis as well. Yep, you get me. And then from then, like, we just kind of kept in contact. Like, cool. we was gonna link up when he came to London, but obviously things happen and rare tear tear. Yep. But now, like, obviously I'm out here. It's only right that the first <laughs> MLS player we get on the show is Cole Bassett. Cole Bassett. Like, you understand? Yeah. So hey, how you been from, doing from man? that game as well? Oh, I've been good. But do you remember that game? That was Saka's first game. I was just thinking about yep. that. Yep. Oh, yeah, that was yeah, that was terrible. the game. Nicole, I'm reminded. I'm reminded of this moment every single time we play. You want to say it? That was the game. That was the game when I saw um I saw Saka for the first time, like live. Martinelli. I saw Martinelli for the first yeah, Martinelli first time yeah. as well. They both scored too. Both scored. Started. Kicked it off. Literally. Like, it was a good, it was, good game to play us. It was a madness, bro. It was. Yeah. I was like, yo, who's this kid? And then, because we knew about Martinelli and we knew about Saka, but I didn't clock it was Saka at yeah. the time. And then Burby was like, yo, that's Saka. Was I was moment. like, yo, oh, I said, oh, young Awobi, because yeah. they're both Nigerian. So I was like, oh, what, young Awobi? And they was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was about, the moment you mentioned is when he comes in for Iwobi, right? That's when you always yeah. like, I told you, this guy's going to be the truth. Literally, like, <laughs> that that game was was the game of Bakayo Saka, blood. It was it was, a, it was a mad performance. But that's when I saw Cole as well for mm-hmm. the first time. You get me? He's a, he's a baller still. Mm-hmm. I can't lie. You understand? Like, let's get straight into it, blood. I want the people them to know, like, get to know a bit about you. So you was born in... Littleton, Littleton, Colorado. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, yeah. I was born born around here, um, but it was in the mountains. I don't know when you came out here if you went up in, into the hills, but it's like uh, fifty minutes from the stadium, so okay. it's kind of far. But yeah, we're in the mountains. Born so, and raised in Littleton. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ever since I was ten, we we moved down here, like to the we were, we used to be like thirty minutes deep into the mountains. Now we moved like right down at the base of them. So what was it like growing up in the mountains as a, as a kid? So like you was on this ski because like yeah. Yeah. You, you grew up in the mountains, yeah. So wouldn't yeah. you have like been more of a skier than a footballer? Yeah, we skied until we were like thirteen or fourteen, but it's in our contract now that we can't we can't do any extreme yeah, sports like that. Yeah. So yeah, you can't go do it anymore. But my dad, he loves it, so he goes every single weekend still. So yeah, that's where we grew up. I mean, we just got ten inches of snow last night as well. Jeez, it's still snow. Jesus Christ. The snow just eased yeah. up here, man. Look, Je- my producer Jet Ski's twisting his neck. He loves a bit of snowboarding, like he, he knows, like he's like, "Yo, truth, when we got there, we got to go." I, I said to him, "Yo, we're gonna yeah. go. When, like when we go check you and John, we're gonna come up there like summertime." Because when we came up to Colorado that time, bro, I was sweating mm-hmm. profusely. Like, mm-hmm. You would have thought yeah. I played ninety minutes the way I was sweating. Bro. <laughs> High but now, wow. yeah, but now Jet Ski's, you get me there, smiling away. Man, man's got to go there in winter. You going Saturday? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to Aspen. Ah, uh, lucky. That, that yeah. town is great, bro. <laughs> so how did you uh, get into nice. football? Like, obviously, growing up as a kid, like, in the mountains, the Rockies, yeah. skiing and that. How did you, like, who in your family was into football? Or is anyone Nobody. into football? No, no. My dad and mom. My dad played one year when he was in high school. That was it. But the only reason I started is because it was the only sport you could start when you were four years old. Every Everything else was five years old. So my mom just put me in it. Cause it was the only sport that like she could do so she could send me off to that so i just started playing it when i was four and then i kind of stuck with that we played like i played i used to play hockey as well basketball but like once you get to a certain age you had to, to choose one so when i was like 12 is when i kind of stuck with football and then yeah I just ran with it from there so when you was 12 like what what, what kind of teams were you watching in europe who did you have your eye on it was it was just arsenal and then the, that was when barcelona that was when pep was there mm. and now that, that team was just absurd with Xavi and Iniesta mm-hmm. in the middle. Um, but Arsenal was kind of like the first one because I remember going out to 
to Dick's, our stadium, and they had the big Arsenal crest. They used to have one uh, in the stadium just because of the partnership. Yeah. Oh, so I just looked at it, and they used to fire a cannon as well, just like the Gunners oh. somewhere. So I was like, I was like, who is this team? They don't do it no more, but they used to. So I, I looked it up, and then that's kind of how I started watching them as well. So like, when, so what, them time that you was about 12? So that's yeah, like yeah. what, maybe, because that what, you're 19, what, you're 19, 19 20, 19, right? you're, you're 19, 20 now, isn't it? Yeah, I'm That's 19 like right Shihu now. Then, so, so that was like... That was like Ramsey. Ramsey that was like Ramsey. Ramsey. Yeah. Cazorla. So so, 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 yeah, so the kind of man you was looking at for inspiration was kind of maybe Santi Cazorla. Yeah, him him and Aaron Ramsey. I mean, I feel like like with goal scoring, I like Aaron Ramsey. Just because like Santi's just a, like a technician. technician. I, there's not too many players in the game that are like that. Yeah. I guess it's tough to be like him. But Aaron Ramsey, I feel like I could kind of replicate his game. Um, with the way he arrives into the box and gets goals and stuff like that. Yeah, tough to have two feet like Santi. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's one tough, of a few. Yeah, yeah. He, you don't really yeah. see a player that can take a left foot and a right yeah. foot a free kick. It's, it's like he doesn't know which one's stronger. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. So, like, how did um, Colorado Rapids find out about you? Uh, I mean... Because who was you playing for as a so, kid? Was you playing for, like, your local yeah, team or did you actually play yeah, for like, Yeah, local team. I mean, it's basically, like, back home for you guys, it would be called your school team. Mm -hmm. Here it was called uh, Colorado Rush is what it was called. And when I was uh, 16, my coach from that team moved to Rapids Academy. So I moved over to the academy with him. And within one year, I went from the 17s to the 19s to the 23s to the first team. It just kind of happened, like, really quick. And I signed when I was 17. Yeah, because you made you made six appearances in the 2018 season and you actually got a goal. Yeah, yeah the last game of the season. That one was crazy. Uh, it was a weird down 1-0 in the like 80th minute and then we scored two to win it. And I got the first one, so that one was pretty special. Quick question. So I, I just wanted to ask you about your time with the rush. So I was doing a little a little digging and yeah. back when you were under 14, there was a moment where your coach had no belief in you whatsoever. How did you overcome that? Mm -hmm. How did you how did you get yourself to get back? And, you know, because they say that 14 is the key, uh, key age in football. Yeah, I actually moved clubs like to another local uh, team when I was 14. But then I was like, what am I doing? I got to go back and show this coach that like I'm the stuff I can I can make his team. So I moved back and I started doing like two or three sessions a night. I'd even train with the girls, to be honest. Like I would do my session, the older group session, and then the girls were always later. They were always at like six at night. So I'd be there from like four to eight every single night and then sometimes train in the morning as well. By the end of the year, I think I was starting every game for that team. And then um, the next year he made me his captain as well. So then I had that coach and that's the coach that brought me to the, the Rapids Academy as well. So it was just kind of like training so much. It was like to the point where like nobody else was training like as much as me. So like, I just got so good by like continuously doing stuff over and over. This year was like your main, your main year, innit? This year, you're, yeah, yeah. this year, the, the, the stats are mad. Yeah, yeah. The stats are actually like, mad, blood. What, 14 games? <laughs> it's mad. Three, like, I have to, five I have to, goals, I, I have to look at them again, like, and say like, brother, uh, yo, what? Swear down, you're putting down these numbers. Man, 14 uh, games, yeah? 14 games in the MLS. 12 goals direct contribution and five assists blood crazy bro how long is your contract <laughs> yeah, at gotta, the club I gotta do it again how long is your contract at the club two, because i might have to just holler you got two years yeah i might have to yeah, just holler i might have to just holler abba and say yo abba I, I think i think i found one when i was <laughs> over here you know blood i think i found one fam. you understand so yeah when you got that first call up to the um the national team not like the under 18s and that, like the main one in, in yeah. November. How did it feel? It was crazy because it came off of the, the year that I just had. So, I mean, to be honest, I felt like with the camp, we knew it was going to be all domestic based players. So I kind of felt like I deserved to be in there. But once it actually hit, though, like, you, I mean, you, you always watch like your nation growing up. So then actually to be called into it, it, it was a dream come true for me. Um, but it still leaves me a little bit hungry to like keep going back for more because I didn't actually get to play in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I was on the bench for the game, but I didn't actually get in. So it's kind of left me motivated, at least during this offseason, to, to try to get back in the mix um, with the 23s for now to help with the Olympics. But then also, I mean, there's so many games this year for our national team. We've got like three or four, or I think three tournaments and then uh, World Cup qualifying at the end of the year. So for me, it's to, to try to get into that by the end of the year. So how's it looking for um, the Rapids this season? Because the MLS season starts in March, right? Uh, Mid-April now. Okay. It got pushed back. back. Yeah. But it, it's good. I like. I don't know if you guys seen any of our games last year, but we got a young squad. Um, 
but it's like a good one. We got a lot of guys that are kind of unproven, um, but a lot of guys that have big aspirations to try to get to Europe and stuff like that. And I think we have four people, five people in the national team, like mm -hmm. in the pool, mm -hmm. which is, I think, more than most teams in the whole league. So we've got like a good core group of young players. Um, and when we've kind of got the same team as last year, which is nice because we're kind of starting to build some chemistry. And we only brought in like two players this offseason. So it's really kind of the same team com coming into this next year. And America, America as a whole, are kind of stepping it up. It's on the come up yeah. in the, the US, in the US male uh, football side of it, because the female side of it has They've always had dance. that shining They've light. Dance. You get me yeah, from back in yeah. the day, but the men's ain't really had that shining light. I wanted to ask you, like, I know, I know, we're kind of going back into it, but growing up as a kid, like, did it was it was it like was there more places to go to play football for a female, or was it like even because? The girls are the ones that kind of get the, the shine in America when it comes to that kind of sport, innit? Yeah, I mean, I'd say it's even. Like, our state, we've got so many girls that are in the national team. Uh, like, Lindsey Horan, Mal Pugh. I don't know if you know any of those guys, but, yeah, I, I mean, they're, like, key figures in the, in the national team. Um, and we train with them all the time back here. But, like, it seemed like the girls, I mean, it was basically even as us. They, they had, like, three or four teams. We had three or four teams within each club. Um, and then it was just like different age groups and, and different levels. So I felt like it was pretty equal, to be honest. But I mean, it was always tougher um, as guys to like to watch certain players growing up because there was never really they didn't used to have like good TV rights over in Europe. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of always tough to watch games of, of players going to Europe because most of the like Americans uh, in Europe were not in like the biggest leagues. They were in smaller leagues and stuff like that or Germany or something like that. Mm -hmm. And really only the Prem, the Prem and La Liga was on over here. So that part was tough to watch those guys. Who 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 are like the American players? Did you look to for inspiration? Like obviously you got like Landon Donovan, you got Landon Donovan, Donovan. and them cats there, Brian McBride. Obviously they're different positions, isn't it? Landon Donovan is kind of like he's kind of like in your Clint, role. Clint Dempsey. Clint Dempsey. Yeah. He's another one that's very similar to your kind of play. Who did you kind of look at and thought, yeah, you know what, you're kind of doing your thing? Yeah, I, I would say it was Landon for sure. I mean, he's he's been one of the best of of all time. Yeah. Um, but I think one, like, he's not my position, but I got to play with him was Tim Howard. Um, mm. And he played in the Prem for so long. So mm. he was my teammate for two years, three years. So I kind of learned a lot from him in the locker room because, I mean, he played at Everton for so long, mm. Manchester United as well. So under, he's kind of taught Sorrento me a Alex. couple of things. Yeah, which was, it was cool to hear some of the stories. And he was with Ronaldo as well mm -hmm. while he was there. And Ronaldo was coming up as a young kid. And he was just telling me all the stories about that. And then uh, even like Ross Barkley, when Barkley was breaking through at Everton, mm -hmm. when, he, when he was pretty good back then, he was telling me stories about him because I uh, play a similar position to him as well. So that's kind of been nice because he, he's told me a lot of stories that can help me uh, later on in my career. That's pretty sick, man. It's always yeah. good to have like an older, wiser head who's yeah. been through it. And and the, the, the clubs he's played for, and obviously Everton's not like... There we go. But, but like, the caliber of players, the caliber like of player, Ronaldo, we hear you get Ronaldo me, stories. CR7, you get me, he was around Beckham yeah. and man there, Van Nistelrooy, Sir Alex, yeah. Rio Ferdinand. That's 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 kind of to good pass, to have. pass it on to young cats like this. Is, mm. It's awesome, man. Pass it's, on it's, those experiences. Yeah, it's a mad thing, blood. But like, you, so, so you said um, you're an Arsenal fan, yeah? Yeah. So yeah. how do you feel about... The club now, like obviously you probably can't go into depth, but like, what's your, yeah. how are you feeling looking at doing? it from, you from at? the outside? <laughs> you were telling me it's not like, like, so, so. Yeah, he's got a because, you know, that's what they want to know. That's what the people want to know. Because pays his wages, yeah, blood, yeah, so he's yeah, got a trend yeah, right there. That's what they're telling me. Yeah, I don't like, worry, Cole, blood. You can, I call you. You can, I blood. I'll kick Zara off the podcast. You be my new, you be my new co-host, blood. Don't worry about that, blood. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah, I mean it's 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 been a tough like transition period yeah. uh, in the past year. I mean in the prem, it's been like uh, not anything that we'd hope for. I mean it, when you're in mid table, that's that's not where Arsenal mm. deserves to be. Mm -hmm. I mean they deserve to be at least. I mean I remember a couple of years ago we were always complaining about always finishing fourth, but now we're we're mid table. Mm. I think the standard has to be you got to be finishing top three um, with, with the size of the club as Arsenal. But mm -hmm. I do like some of the, the young guys that they're bringing up. I like the trust that they have in the youth, um, given Saka the amount of time he's gotten. Um, and he's he's deserved it. But there's, I've watched a couple of games where, where him and Smith Rowe as well have, have not impacted the game as well, but they, con uh, they continue to put him in. And mm -hmm. I like that. They got a, like a good mix of, of youth and experience with like Oba and Lacazette and um, I mean, Jaka's not older, but I mean, he, he he's he's been putting in some performances as well recently. So, 
uh, I think we're on the come up. I think we do need a couple more pieces, but um, I like the youth that they've got going on there. Now you went to Hell End. Um, you went to Hell End, no? Uh, Colney. Colney. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who did you train with when you was there? I was mostly with the 23s, but I trained with the first team a couple of times as well. Uh, that was like it was the last couple of weeks when Unai was there before he got sacked. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a, it was kind of a weird time, but um, it was during the international break. So uh -huh. it was when guys like Oba and Saka were all gone. Mm -hmm. So I I hopped in with the first team and we did like scrimmages there, which was pretty good though because there was still like I mean when I was training it was wasn't uh, Ozil uh, there. Yeah, yeah Ozil was like there. Louise yeah, he was on my Kent. team. Ozil, Lacazette, Tierney, Bellerin. Uh, all the guys. I mean, most of the guys that just aren't regular internationals were all there. Yeah. So what was it like so seeing Me Meza Ozil like, at close hand? Like, Obviously, you're very it's, similar to yeah. him. Like, you, that, That's the kind of, that's your style of play. Like, How is it to see like a man of his capability? Like, obviously, we know the levels that Ozil has. Obviously, the way it ended, mm -hmm. it was a bit sour, yeah. but we know the capability the man has. But you seeing it first hand on the training ground because that's what we is, always say yeah that's what is what he, he as good is he as good yeah. as they say is at he, training like what they say about the training ground does he do up the mazzoline yeah he did he was the best player in training Jeez. like you can't everyone you can't take the ball that. off him it, like it, it didn't make any sense to me because like at the time i was watching and it was the period before he started playing like yeah before, before came in. Came in. yeah so he wasn't playing but like i remember watching before and he was like kind of on and off he wasn't like doing it as well as he was the season before mm -hmm. but like you, you just could not take the ball off him i mean i remember he megged me so bad <laughs> he just put it right through my legs and went, went the other way need that Straight clip down. need that clip you got that clip <laughs> oh, I, I wish i had the clip i don't think they want me to post it but like it doesn't make any sense because he, he seems like he's slow or something like that. But on yeah, the ball, yeah. it's so hard to get him off it. Like, he, even when he runs with the ball, he's not that fast. Mm -hmm. But he somehow always, like, moves his body in the way that it's he like can It's like he's gliding. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then his passing is just Unreal. insane. Yeah. So, What's yeah. he like as a person? Yeah. Because, obviously, we see, him, we see him doing a lot of charity for people. And every time I've kind of met him, he's always kind of been a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Very humble. Yeah. Some of them are a bit arrogant. Mm -hmm. How did you feel like? Yeah. Did he give you any advice as well? Like, did he take you aside and maybe did any of the Arsenal players kind of yeah. take you aside yeah. and? Yeah, a couple of them did. Not, not him. I mean, he was a nice guy. Like, he came up to me. He was one of the first guys that came up to me and kind of just said, "Oh, you're from America." Huh? Oh, wicked! But, oh, uh, nice. It was, it was Hector Bellerin actually was the guy that oh. like came over and, and was kind of explaining to me. Even though he's he's a right back, yeah. but he was on my team and I was playing right midfield. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of coming up to me and, and explaining like the way that Emery wanted to press. Um, Cause I think we had at the time it was AV8 in the game. So it wasn't like you had a winger. Mm -hmm. I was kind of the guy that was going out to the fullback for him. So he was kind of talking to me about that. And then uh, David Luiz as well was, was telling me a couple stuff. Um, but for the most part, like in the midfield, it was all young guys. It was like me and Matt Smith. Yeah. yeah uh, I know James Olayinka. Yep. Those guys, Ola. Trey Coyle as well. Yep, Trey. Yep. So it was like all, it Late was all of us Ola. that were playing in the midfield. So it's kind of like the whole defenses of both teams were the actual Arsenal defenders. Mm -hmm. And then up top, it was like Ozil and Lacazette were the two. But then like the whole midfield was academy players. So Thanks, it was kind of like the defenders giving you advice. How was Emery like? Like, was he proper? Like, how was his? Because I want to know, like, obviously everyone says like it was the, the language barrier that was a, mm -hmm. a big issue. Did you find that when you met him? Like, or was it, did he literally see you and go, good evening? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cool, no, I got I ask, bro. Like that. Uh, everyone, so you funny. know, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. No, he didn't say that. Um, but the language barrier you could tell was a bit like from some of the players, especially like the one thing I noticed is with Lacazette. Yeah, like he just kept yelling Laka, Laka, Laka. Like that's what he just kept yelling. Mm -hmm. And Laka was like chasing all around, but he didn't really know what he meant. Mm -hmm. Like because he just wanted him to go and press and press and press, mm -hmm. and he just kept yelling Laka, Laka, Laka. But he didn't like know how to explain it mm -hmm. sometimes, language wise. Um, but I think he had the right ideas. I just think some of the performances didn't come off. Because, like, when I was in training sessions with him, like, the way the assistant coaches would explain it to me, mm -hmm. or, like, Steve Steve Bold would come over and he yeah. would help me. And he was, like, explaining what he wanted. And, like, I mean, to me, at the time, it was it was pretty good ideas. I just think some of the performances didn't come off the way that he wanted with the players that he had. Do you think but that's I, what it I was? was it was the, 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 the language barrier, what kind of made it go yeah. left? Yeah, probably. I would guess so. And when you get into it, it's tough because like I've I've had four managers while I've been here at Colorado, or three or four, um, one intern. But like it's tough when managers are switching, and then once you go into a losing streak mm -hmm. and you just continue to lose, it's kind of hard for the players. Like when you know that he might get sacked, to like kind of rally around them. Mm -hmm.
like sometimes you kind of just wanted something new as well. Mm-hmm. So when when the results weren't going his way, maybe it was a bit tougher for the players once they heard that oh uh, maybe Arteta's coming in or mm-hmm. something like that. Um, even even though it's tough, I mean you have to as a player. You, that's not an excuse. Mm-hmm. You have to still put in performances, but sometimes just. Um, it is a bit tougher to continue to keep up the form that you had before when you were doing well. Mm. Did you did you get the vibe that some of the players didn't like kind of vibe with Emery, like the, the tactical side of it, the, the language barrier? Where they're like, like when training was done, where they're like little conversations where, yo, what was my man saying? Like, did you understand what my man was doing? Like, I'm running around like a headless chicken. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I saw like like the only time I saw it was Lacazette when he was trying to explain it to press. I, he went up and talked to Mezit, but <clears throat> to be honest, not really because most of the bigger players like Aubameyang and I think Granit Xhaka was gone. That was when Guendouzi was playing all the time. Yeah, all those guys they weren't there. They were all on international duty, so mm. it was kind of just like the defenders mm. talking it over. And for them, it, when I was in there, that it wasn't really working on the defenders. It was working on the forwards and the midfielders pressing mm. against the defenders. So they were kind of just playing out. So. Uh, I didn't really see too much of that, to be honest. Yeah, because I always wanted to. I always wanted to know about Emery. Yeah, I always there's, wanted there's to behind like, the scenes working. Yeah, because tactically you could see what he was trying to do, but yeah, then yeah. I it's it's the language barrier, like because even when he's getting asked certain questions mm-hmm. in, in in the in, press conferences, in, he he don't know what the question yeah. is and he's answering it completely wrong, and yeah. you're like, bro, like. You need an interpreter, like how Pochettino mm. had it at the start. Yeah, he had the interpreter. He's, the way Bielsa, the way Bielsa's got his interpreter. Then mm. you just get me. But make sure you understood everything. Yeah, it's a mad thing. But um, yeah, I think he's he's a good coach though, because you see what he's been doing everywhere. I mm. mean, Sevilla, Villarreal now. They're, yeah, they're doing well. He's doing pretty well. I've doing been watching. Very, very I've well. been watching them in the Europa League because uh, they've been playing Salzburg. Yeah, Salzburg has this young American that's my friend that just moved over there, uh, Aronson. So I've been watching them, and I mean, Villarreal looks very good. So. Uh, he's a he's a good manager. I just think that language barrier was tough for him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. I f- it was definitely yeah. The, the it's got to be stuff. that because when you see him at um, mm-hmm. Sevilla, mm-hmm. where he done like most of his damage, mm-hmm. te- that tactically he was on point. Mm. You get me? It's just even I think even when he was in PSG, that um, mm-hmm. his the language barrier mm-hmm. kind of affected him there as well, but. Um, yeah, Jetski was doing yeah. like madness. Like. <laughs> I was trying to you, get your I, attention. I, 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 I had, had like half attention. of you, yeah, and then like he's there WhatsApping someone, and the WhatsApp messages like, come up. I'm like, like yo, where's Cole gone? Like, where, where did Cole go? I'm like, where's he? But he's back again. You understand? He's back again, yeah, blood. You get it's me? true. But um, bro, I I, I just want to thank you um for coming on, man. You get me? You didn't have yeah. to. You understand? I'm I'm a bit of a loose cannon, so I get that I've got I've got links in the industry, but I know that. Some people are a bit nervous, like you get me, to, because they think I'm gonna come with my whole, my whole madness. You get me, but I can, you get me. I can. Can I sneak in one question? Yeah, that, I'm, on. that I'm curious. Uh, on. Just before you leave, what are you doing with this, with all this time, man? With quarantine? Have you uh, yeah. just been at home? I mean, been yeah, right now it's picking just up been hobbies and shit like that. Yeah, I mean uh, it's tough because you can't really go out at all. So uh, I'm just home with my family because I still live with my family right now. Um, before hopefully make a jump to Europe and that's when I'll move out. But um, I was supposed to go train over in Europe, but then you guys all went back down into lockdown. Yeah. Uh, Cause we had, I didn't get called into the January camp for the senior men's national team. Okay. So I, I had about a month off and that's when I was going to go train in Europe somewhere. Um, but basically every country except for Portugal, like wouldn't let me in um, besides having like quarantine for two, two weeks or yeah. something like that. And at the time I didn't know when preseason was going to start. So I ended up not going, and um, our preseason starts next Monday uh, for us. But uh, if we leave for national team, then we won't be there for a bit. So, yeah, basically just staying at home right now, training. Because what, it's Colorado on full lockdown? <clears throat> no, it's way different compared yeah, to you guys. Really awesome. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot looser. Um, like, here it's... Is it a bit like Miami? Most Atlanta? that's open. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's this, pretty similar. Our area is most of the, the restaurants are open. Comes, yeah. The bars are open. The colleges are open. Yeah. I think the only thing that's not open is like clubs and and stuff like mm. that. But I mean, we don't go to those. Yeah, so. of course. When are they going to uh, be letting fans back in? Because I want to come. I want to come check you, bro. I want to come watch you kick some ball, yeah. man. Before you move to, <laughs> I think, before, be, before you move to Real Madrid or one of them teams there. <laughs> I think there are fans this year in MLS. I think it's limited capacity, but I think most most places have fans. Mm-hmm. Um, oh shit! I think oh, it yeah. depends on on the market. Like, I mm-hmm. mean, obviously, if you last year, like all the teams in Florida, they had like. 
five to seven thousand, yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw that. Um, it depends at, um, where you saw, are. Yeah, but I will, think it, Orlando. Yeah. Mm. So I'm gonna have to. Orlando. Th- yeah, yeah Orlando. I think Orlando and yeah, I think in the Miami, in the Miami, yeah. yeah, they all had Florida just lets mm-hmm. it fly. Yeah, yeah. But at but, least I got. I, I mean, I think now well, go you guys are in New Jersey, right? Now yeah, in, yeah, yeah, New yeah York, Jersey, New York. Actually, Jersey, yeah, yeah Red Bull, yeah, Red Bull, I Jersey. Think, yeah, I mean Red Bull and and then YCFC, NYCFC, there's DC NYC right there. Fox. I think one of them will have somebody open. Yeah. So yeah, I mean there's games I, there. I just don't know if we travel there or not because it's the East Coast. If so I, you if, play them once, so you don't know if it's home or away. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, Jersey, Jersey is already open. They they pushed it with uh, when they did the whole marijuana bill. They snuck in. Uh, they, they lifted some of that. <laughs> they snuck in some of that. Uh, the COVID uh, man's got me talking COVID. about that with him. Oh, whoops, player. whoops, whoops, whoops. Sorry, whoops. No, no I, was, I was talking about. No, I was talking about the law. I was talking. Nah, about I know. <laughs> it is legal though. So yeah, boy, you get me. Like it's. Yeah, it's it is like, here too. It's like imagine if you was playing in Amsterdam. Could you? Could could you? Because it's. I don't know. It's it's legal. Could you? Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's <laughs> how it is here. So probably but, I mean, either. I mean, you get drug tested, but so what? As Colorado is legal. Yeah. Could you yeah, smoke in Colorado yeah. as a player? Because That's, it's legal. I don't know. Not right now. I don't think so. But I think there's talks about potentially because like some people like to use like CBD oil, exactly. Like that. And that, that's not even allowed right now. But I think they're about to change the rules. So I don't know. Because uh-huh. I mean, there's a lot of stuff like um, I've heard uh, like in, in Europe, snooze or something like that. Yeah. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Well, some don't. people, some people use it, but I, I have no clue. Uh, I've never been to Europe and seen people use it. Okay, interesting. Any more questions? No, no. It's, uh, I was just curious what he's uh, what he's doing with his with his quarantine. He's not dancing. That's what he's not doing. Blood. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's not doing that. Blood, nah, isn't it's, it? all, it's all gravy. You get me. But like I said, Cole, yeah. I appreciate you coming on, bro. You get me. We wish yeah. you all the best for your future. We wish you all the best for the season. Uh, me, Jetski, and Zar, we will definitely, definitely, coming out. definitely be coming to check you and John. You get me? As soon as, as soon as they give the green light for the fans, bro. I need you to send me free tickets, blood. You get me? Oh, of course. Or just put yeah, my name yeah. on the door no, when I come. I say, yeah. yeah. I say, yeah. I'm Cole's new <laughs> agent. You get me? Agent Troops, blood. You already yeah, know my yo, thing. Rap, you get me? Rap, rap, come rap. on, G. I'm going to pick him up. You feel me? I'm telling you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Rapids. But like I said, man, you get me. All the best for the season. You get me. All the best for you and the family. And you get me. Just take care. Stay healthy and stay safe, my brother. Yeah, yeah, you guys as well. Thank you very much for having me on, boys. Nah, big up, bro. Appreciate you. So big up to my bro, Cole. You get me? Um, like I said at the end of the video, like, you get me? I'm, I'm a bit... I've got contacts in the game. Serious contacts yeah. in the game. But obviously, because of my... We would, we're going to say my reckless nature. My honesty sometimes mm. gets me in trouble. You get me, but I very nice think, lad, bro. Bro, he's the man, bro. I like like him, I say, I, like I met him. the way we met each other. Yeah. You get me, and we just stayed in contact since then. He's pre me. And, yeah. He's 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 the shining light out of the youth them coming out for for America, and for him to come on the show, nothing but gratitude for Cole. That's, you get me. That's now my MLS player. I am definitely watching every single thing he does now. So shout out to Cole. Thank People you, look man. out for him as well, blood. Proper baller. You get me. You understand. Might make him nap crunky. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you see? You see? I there can't, you go again. I just got, there you go again. I can't help myself, blood. I can't help myself. But that's why they love me, blood, isn't it? Like, I, I just can't help myself, blood. But you get me. Let's slide into um oh, the weekend's fixtures. Um, Obviously, we play on Sunday. Fuck my life. Seven o'clock back again. The last seven o'clock. The last seven o'clock was in Philly. At least you woke up there. <laughs> at least you woke yeah, up there. Yeah, literally <laughs> rolled up for just. I gotta get in. I, I gotta shower. Oh, and bed. You gotta come from Jersey. Jersey. Oh, I'm like, I'm Jet ski's gotta come from here. Jersey. <laughs> yeah, back to. It looks like back. Yeah, it is back to backs. Don't it's too bad. Yeah, it is back to backs. I saw that. I checked that out. It's back to two seven. Oh, Burnley's yep. half seven. Yep, it's two back. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck two my back-to-backs, life. Two back to backs, and then we're back to twelve thirty. Bro, I'm oh, mate. Arsenal going up to Leicester City, the King Power Stadium, to take on Leicester. Leicester flying high in the league. Uh, third, joint second. Um, they're in third, but it's joint second, let's be real. Because they got the same points as United. It's only United's goal difference. What's keeping them above Leicester? Uh, we dropped to 11th. Uh, due to Leeds United 
getting the three 0 victory over Southampton. Oh mate, and what that loss? Uh, what's it called? We're more losses than wins. Mm. And it's yeah, um, a stat that I for, for uh, well, I I knew about it. I didn't really want to bring it out, blood. But now this pussy old to my left. Has, oh whoops! <laughs> I has brought out the stat, blood. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know that. You no, get no, me? It's, 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 I just looked and I see 11 losses, 10 wins. It's like, all right. This is... I mean, when you look at the, the stats for the season, yeah? Played 25, won 10, drawn 4, lost 11, scored 31, conceded 26, 26 bro. 20. We're in February, yeah? And we have our goal difference of plus 5, blood. We are in February and we are not even at the 40 point mark. 25 games played. 25 games, blood. This is just madness, blood. Yeah. Like, how would you... You know what? Let me give you some stats here before we get into <clears throat> the nitty gritty, yeah? Yep. Leicester City have won four of their last six Premier League matches against Arsenal. Including that. So four wins, one draw, one defeat. One more than in their previous 36 top flight league matches against the Gunners which had 10 draws and 23 defeats for Leicester Arsenal have lost their last three away Premier League matches against Leicester receiving more red cards two than goal than goals scored one in these three three games. games Leicester have lost once to Arsenal at the King Power this season losing 2 0 in the League Cup you remember that? Mm. Um, I was actually in London you for that did one. That for over Zoom, right? No, I was in London. No, I was still AFTV then. Yeah, that was before. That was it's was before, it's before I came what over. Are the Zoom games. I'm trying to think of which Zoom, Zoom. We was. did. We did uh, Chelsea on Zoom. We did uh, West Brom on Zoom. We did Newcastle on Zoom, and did we did Brighton on Zoom. Here. Uh, Leicester, yeah, uh, one nil, uh, yeah, at the League Cup. Um, the only team to beat the Foxes twice at the King Power Stadium in a season is Chelsea, who did so in both 2016 and 2017. Arsenal have won just 14.3% of their Premier League matches at the King Power Stadium. So that's one out of seven, blood. That's one out of seven, bro, yeah? And that's when Alexis scored a hat-trick at there. And uh, it was an it was electric scenes in the in, in the away end. It was probably one of the best away ends I've been involved in. Oh, it was it was amazing. It was amazing, bro. It was amazing. Like Alexis and Ozil were literally taking souls yeah. left, right, and fucking centre blood. You get me? You guys were fucking going nuts. It was crazy. Wild. It was crazy, bro. One of my favorite away day experiences. Um, but like I said, one out of seven we've won. Yeah, among stadiums at which they've played at least five games. Only at Hillsborough, 12.5%. And Old Trafford, 13.8%. Do they have a lower win ratio in the competition? And finally, three different teams have already done the Premier League double over Arsenal this season. Aston Villa, Man City and Wolves. The most in a single competition against the Gunners since 1994. When we lost to Leeds, Liverpool... Newcastle and QPR, who's done the double. Four. So Leicester have the opportunity, yeah, the chance to do it, yeah, to do the double. <laughs> that's why they, that's why they bring up that stat. <laughs> and obviously midweek, um, in their Jets, my bro, and uh, midweek, um, they made a lot of change. They made a few changes midweek, and they they went out midweek. And I I, I believe um, you get me. The Premier League is is is, is their true agenda mm-hmm. because remember last year. They missed out on Champions League football on the last game of the season. The last day of the season, yeah. bro. It was them and Man United. Whoever won that game would get Champions League football. Man United won that game. Man United went to the Champions League. Leicester went to the Europa League. They don't want to bottle it again yeah. this year. They're in a good position this year. With with Chelsea and uh, Tuchel. You Chelsea get me? Tuchel. Tuchel's coming. You got West Ham. Yep. You got Liverpool still up. Like, Liverpool are only five points mm-hmm. off West Ham. They're, they're nine behind um, Leicester. Then you've got yeah, Everton, Everton as well. Because Everton got a game in hand. You've got Villa. Villa got two games in hand. You get me? Fuck Tottenham. You understand? Even though they got same points as uh, Villa. They've got a, Villa got a game in hand on them pussy 
But um, how would you go in this game is the question. Oh. Because obviously we're not going to have no uh, midweek game. Yeah. You get me? Um, our next game is um, Burnley. On Saturday. Really. On Saturday, which is 730 so I get a literal, I get a half an hour extra sleep next week. You get me, <laughs> as opposed to this week. Because this week is fucking seven a.m. <laughs> seven a.m. <laughs> so, um, how would you, how would you go? Would you, would you mix and blend? Yes. Or we, would you we have to? Because you don't want to risk a beatdown. And uh, and also, especially from what we saw from uh, from yesterday. Right, you know, you got the you got the Smith role looked a bit naked. He needs a rest. Saka, Saka has been playing a, a lot and all that, so you have to factor you have to factor shit like that into into consideration. So in in goal, I would have Burnt Leno. I'll go the back four in goal. Burnt Leno, right back. I would try. I would play Cedric. I would play. Actually, no, Hector. Hector Hector's been bang average. He hasn't been standout. So I would keep I would keep Bellerin in there. I would definitely drop Gabriel. Gabriel since since he don't you had think? Uh, now go on. I'll, I'll ask you. After. Yeah, no. Gab- Gabriel since uh, since the whole his his uh, injury and all that. Sorry, the the Corona incident. He hasn't he hasn't been the same defender. I'll swap him for Pablo Mari. Bring, bring Mari back in. Play him with Louise. Keep Tierney on the left. The pivots uh, to build up part of his fitness. If if he can start, I'd start Partey with uh, not Xhaka this time, but I'd start him with Sabayo. So I was very impressed by Sabayo. Apart from his two mistakes, apart from his two mistakes that cost two goals, the rest of his game was fine, and I liked how I liked how he was playing uh, the midweek. So I would I would uh, he has been fine too. The the last the last couple games that he's played, he's provided that dynamic, good energy, box to box stuff, running around. So I'll play him in the pivot. Uh Pepe would go on the right. Martin go through the middle. Od- Od- Odegaard. Odegaard, yep. M- Martin through the middle. I would put Aubameyang on the left and start, like I said. I would go Leno in goal. I'd go Cedric. I'd go Louise and Gabriel. I'd keep Gabriel you keep him. You keep I him think in. the only way he can get that rustiness out of his game. Play him out of it. Is to play. For me, that's the only way that he can get out of it. Left back, Tierney. Midfield, uh, Partey and uh, Ceballos. On the left, Pepe. On the right, Martinelli. In the 10. In the 10, Willian. Up top, Lacquer. I'd swap, I'd swap. I'd put Willian in the 10. Yeah, Willian in the 10. Pepe on the left, Martinelli on the right, Lacquer up top. One swap to mine, I'm, I'm going to swap Aubameyang and, and, uh, and Martinelli. That's You're going to put swap. Martinelli, Martinelli, Martinelli on, the, on, the, on the, left. the left? Yeah, on the left. Pepe, Pepe on, on the right. right. Pepe on the right, Martin, and then Martin Odegaard on the 10. ten. Uh, like I said, up front. Okay. Yep. Uh, prediction. <sighs> I'm going to go... Fuck, Jamie Vine. Oh, shit. Vardy, Realist, Vardy always scores. scores. Yeah, that's, that's that's what I'm factoring in. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like it's, Sterling. It's, it's you just gotta score more than Vardy does. Uh, Vardy is definitely. Sc- I think one one. One one. I think, I think we can draw one one. Uh, I will go. I go two one Arsenal. Two one Arsenal. I go two one Arsenal. I think that even though they made changes in that game midweek, mm-hmm. Tillman's played. He's a main guy. Yeah, yeah. Vardy played. Vardy He's a main there. guy. Kasper Michael played. Mm-hmm. He's a main guy. I think uh, Ndidi, Ndidi, Ndidi played. played. I saw, I'm sure well, I saw Ndidi so in the mid. I think uh, Amati played. Yeah, yeah, yeah Amati was playing. Yeah, I think he might have scored. <clears throat> no, no, he didn't. No, because it was two 0 It was two 0 But uh, they, Ndidi's a main. So I think they, they had oh, a few. Oh, you subbed. That's right. Yeah, they had a few main. Evans played another main one. Yeah. So you get me? There was a few man there. All Brighton, another main one. So there was a. They, they did a bit of a mix and blending. So maybe the confidence might. You understand? Because then players, will, they, will, they will be involved against us. Harvey, no, Harvey Barnes came off the bench. Yeah, he came off the bench. Came He's the definitely going to rest Harvey. Yeah, so uh, Zaha's gone 1-1. And I am going Leicester City 1, Arsenal 2. I think we'll get the okay. win, blood. You okay. get me? I, I hope we fucking do get the win, yeah. mate. Because at least then, we would have won and lost the same amount of games. <laughs> you get me? 
Always look on the bright <laughs> side of life. Hey, <laughs> yeah, son. Uh, looking through the games, big, big, big Sunday, big, big one. Sunday as well. Uh, looks like me and Zar will be chilling in the office all Sunday, mate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's son. Chelsea, uh, two shells or two car, whatever you want to call him. Uh, his Chelsea take on second placed Manchester United at Stamford Bridge. Now, Chelsea are coming into it off um, the win midweek against Atletico. Uh, last week, a 1 1 draw away at Southampton. I think that's the first time that two shots drop points since he's come in. Uh, United. Boring nil nil, uh, midweek, but they was already through winning the first leg four nil last weekend. They had uh, they beat Newcastle, uh, three one. Everyone's beating Newcastle though. Let's be real. <laughs> you get me. Their managers getting slapped in doggy everywhere they go, fam. Shut up, shut up, Joey. You get me. But um, a few stats for the people. Uh, Chelsea were beaten two nil at Stamford Bridge by Man United last season in the Premier League. They haven't lost consecutive home games against the Red Devils since October nineteen ninety five. In all competitions, Man United have won their last three away games against Chelsea, winning in the FA Cup in February 2019, League Cup in October 2019, and Premier League in February 2020. They have never won four in a row away against Chelsea. Chelsea haven't lost four consecutive home games in all competitions against an opponent since a run of four against Watford between 1981 and 1986. Chelsea have failed to score in three consecutive Premier League games against Man United, attempting 41 shots without success across these games. The last time they failed to score in four consecutive top flight matches against an opponent was in 1960 against Bolton Wanderers. Wow, Bolton was good back then. Mm-hmm. And <coughs> finally, Chelsea have kept a clean sheet in each of their three Premier League home games under manager Thomas Tuchel, with the Blues last keeping four in a row in January 2018. The only manager not to concede a single goal in their first four home Premier League games in charge is Brendan Rodgers in 2011. I was itching to supplement that. I have it right there. <laughs> Chelsea have kept the clean sheet. That's okay. that. That's that. I was like, okay. I, I was, like, oh, was going to contribute <laughs> yeah. to the fucking stats section. I have one this week. <laughs> you just said it as a I got that. Just me, man. Stat man troops, blood. <laughs> you get me. But United have been getting the better of Chelsea, especially at the bridge. You know who else has been getting? It's United specific. That's been getting, no. So the well, actually I'll add one. Mark, okay. Marcus Rashford has been involved in seven in all. Has been involved in seven goals in all competition against Chelsea again. Against no other side has he been more involved than goals. So that's the side yeah. where he comes alive, blood. So you're in trouble this week. They're coming for your club, yep. blood. Yep. They're uh, coming they still for your club, <laughs> they, still, they still have been. They're, They're coming for your club this week, Keep blood. coming. Keep coming. Yeah. They're coming out from OT, bro. <laughs> you get me? I don't know, you know. This is a, it's a sneaky one still. Because two, two shall. If it was Lampard, yeah, I would have gone for I would have gone for United. Because Ole, he kind of slap yeah. up Lampard. I only... Only part time him slap out Lampard. I mean, no, I got lie, dog. But two two shower is actually playing, a manager. Yeah, he's playing well. He has tactics. Yes, I'm going to go for a draw. Direction and a plan. You know what? I actually think that uh, Tuchel can, can win this. I think yeah. Chelsea's going to yeah, I'm going to go for a Chelsea win. Yeah? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm going 1-1. One, one. I'm going to go 2-1 Chelsea. 2-1 Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Bamba. Um, <clears throat> that is the biggest. The biggest games of the weekend are literally Leicester-Arsenal. And Chelsea United. Another big game, to be honest, I think it would be bigger if this opponent was at home and not away. And that's Man City against yep. West Ham. Yep. If West Ham was at home, yeah. City, you man better, yo, you man gotta go, you man gotta go hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm mm-hmm. You man gotta mm-hmm. go hard, blood. You get me? But West Ham, Great. West Ham flying high, blood. They are in the top four. Um, two-one victory against Tottenham last week out, and they are two points clear of Chelsea. Man City, obviously, doing absolute madness. Twenty wins in a row, um, twenty wins in all competitions in a row, eighteen in a row in the Premier League. Um, Man City, literally unstoppable. <laughs> you get me? They have a goal difference. They have a goal difference. They, di- they have a goal difference of plus thirty-five, bro. They have scored fifty goals. And conceded 15, blood. 
Yeah. <sighs> they have won 18, played 25, won 18, drawn five, lost two. We've lost 11. These men have lost two, blood. Do you understand? <laughs> um, like I said, Man City uh, coming off um, the 1 0 win against us last weekend. Obviously, the 2 0 win in the Champions League away to Muchin Gabak, uh, Xhaka's former team. <clears throat> a few stats for the people. Uh, Man City are unbeaten in their last 10 Premier League meetings with West Ham. Eight wins and two draws since a 2-1 home loss in September 2015. West Ham are looking to avoid defeat in both league matches with Man City in a Premier League campaign for the first time since 2015. One win and one draw. However, the Hammers have lost 10 of their last 11 league visits Excuse me, to the Etihad. Since losing 5-2 against Leicester in September... Man City have conceded just three goals in 15 home games in all competitions. 13 wins and three two goals. draws. The Citizens have won their last six Premier League home games without conceding. With Chelsea, the last team to have a longer such run in the competition. And that was between the 9th of, the ninth, and that was between the ninth of April. Of April, April until November. Um, November 2010. Only Man City, 33 have won more Premier League points so far in 2021 than West Ham, who have won 22. The Hammers have won seven of their nine league games in this calendar year. They didn't reach their seventh win until their 23rd match in 2020. And finally, West Ham have won just two of their 23 Premier League away games against the leaders, two, uh, three, three draws and 18 defeats. With both of those victories coming in Manchester against United in 2007 and against City in 2015. I gotta be honest, bro. You're going West Ham? Man City. Oh, okay. Whew, I, was, oh, I was expecting you to go West Ham. Nah, Man City. Yeah, Man City's too good. Nah, Man City. Man if, City it was a, if it was a, if it was at Olympic Stadium, I might go for a draw. I might go for a draw. Nah, even there. But at Etihad. Even there. The I'm form there. Nah, but West Ham have been on some good form. Mm. Good as and at home, good form. And I know City, they have to lose one game, blood. But I don't think it's this is they have to drop points, one. should I say? Because yeah. they can't even fucking draw. But they I don't think this is the game where it's they drop points. I'm going City 3 0. Uh, I'm gonna go City 2 1. Sheffield United, bottom of the league. Uh they take on Liverpool. Liverpool are in sixth, and Liverpool are in trouble at this moment in time. Uh, they got slapped up uh, last week by Everton in the Merseyside derby. 2-0 uh, at Anfield. Sheffield United, uh, they had a big game away at Fulham. And Fulham <clears throat> won that game 1-0. Uh, Sheffield United lost 1-0 to Liverpool at Bramwell Lane last season. Last losing consecutive home top flight meetings with the Reds back in September 1921. Uh, Liverpool have won their last four Premier League games against Sheffield United. Uh, though those wins have been spread over the 2006, 2019 and 2020 seasons. Uh, Sheffield United have lost their last seven Premier League matches against the reigning champions. Their last win against reigning top flight champions was against Leeds in 1993. Uh, Sheffield United have lost 20 of their 25 Premier League games this season. Three wins and two draws. It's the fewest amount of games a team has taken to reach 20 defeats in a single campaign in English top flight history. <laughs> so he's just getting slapped up. <laughs> fewest. Oh, damn. And then finally, uh, Liverpool have lost six of their last nine Premier League games. Uh, two wins and one draw. As many as they had in their previous 100 in the competition. Jesus. They won 75 and drew 19. The Reds have lost four consecutive Premier League games, last losing five in a row in the top flight, excuse me, in August 1953. Does Sheffield make it five? Does Sheffield make it five? <laughs> nah. Liverpool got this. I want to say yes. I want to say yes, but the fucking, that, that front line is just so, I think Liverpool out, will outscore them. Mm -hmm. Their defense is shaky, but uh, they, they'll outscore them, so Liverpool wins. Everton, Southampton. Um, Everton, obviously, buzzing, coming off that great win at Anfield. First win in, in since 1999 at Anfield. First time they've beaten Liverpool in over eight years, I think. Uh, Southampton having a bad season, coming off a 3-0 defeat to Leeds. 
Everton are unbeaten in their last 15 Premier League games against Southampton. 10 wins and 5 draws <clears throat> since losing 2-0 under Howard Kendall in 1997. Among Premier League fixtures played at least 25 times, only Everton versus Leeds. 11.5% has a lower away win percentage than Everton versus Southampton. 11.6%. With the away side winning just 5 of the 43 meetings between the sides in the competition. Following their 2-0 victory against Everton back in October, Southampton are looking to secure their first league double over the Toffees since 1997. Southampton have won their last two Premier League Monday games, winning 2-1 at Brighton and 1-0 against Liverpool this season. They last won three top-flight Monday games in April 1992, with the second game in that run being a 1-0 victory against Liverpool. So they couldn't actually do it again. And finally, Everton have lost their last three Premier League home games, last losing more consecutively at home in the top flight between April and September 1958, where they lost seven. Meanwhile, boss Angelotti has never lost four consecutive home games in his managerial career. I'm going Everton. I'm going to go for a draw for this one. Yeah, for I, was, I was thinking of Everton, but I think, I think it's going to be a draw. I'm going to go Everton, man. Uh, West Brom, Brighton. Um, Brighton in 16th. West Brom in 19th. Uh, West Brom, I believe, are gone. Uh, Brighton, they'll stay up. <coughs> Man like Lee Gunner. Uh, West Brom have never lost in 10 previous home league meetings with Brighton, winning six and drawing four. In the, it's the most they've faced an opponent at home in the Football League without ever suffering defeat. Brighton have won only one of their 11 top flight meetings with West Brom, drawing six and losing four, winning 3-1 in September 2017. West Brom are winless in their last seven Premier League games, drawing three and losing four, and also their last seven Premier League home games, drawing five and losing, drawing two and losing five. The Baggies have conceded a league high fifty-five Premier League goals so far this season. West Brom are averaging just seven point eight shots per game in the Premier League this season, the lowest rate on record in a single campaign in the competition since nineteen ninety-seven. And finally, Brighton have just lost one. Of their last six away league games, winning two and drawing three, with that defeat coming at Leaders Man City. I'm going for Brighton. I think it's going to be a draw too. I think this one no 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 draw. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. Tottenham taking on Burnley at the Shithole. Tottenham in ninth, uh, up uh, two points above us. Burnley down in fifteenth, uh, but they should be fine. They should stay up this year. Uh, Tottenham have won five of their six Premier League home games against Burnley, drawing one, netting 16 goals and conceding just three in those games. Burnley are looking for their first away top flight win against Tottenham since October 1974, winning 3-2 under Jimmy Anderson. They've lost six of their seven visits since, drawing one. Tottenham have lost five of their last six Premier League games with one win, more than they had in their previous 28 in the competition, which included 14 wins, 10 draws and four defeats. Tottenham's 10 Premier League victories this season have come against opponents with an average position of 15th in the table on the day of the game. Only West Brom 17th and Palace 16th have beaten lower placed teams on average this term. And finally, Bur Burnley have won four of their last six Premier League games in London, losing two. More than they had in their previous 35 in the top flight, winning three, drawing four, losing 28. The Clarets have won at Arsenal and Palace so far this season. Only in top flight, only in two top flight campaigns have they won more in the capital. Uh, four in 1961 and three in 1974. I'm going for a draw in this one. I'm going Burnley. I'm going for a draw. You're Burnley, going Burnley? Burnley win, yep. I'm going draw. Uh, we've done Everton and Southampton. We've done Liverpool. We've done yep. that. We've done that. We've done that. Uh, yeah, Newcastle Palace. versus Wolves. Uh, Newcastle in 17th. They are dropping dramatically. Fulham are now only two points, uh, three points behind them. They play the same amount of games and Fulham have a way better goal difference. Wolves, um, they've had a bit of a in and out, up and down season. You get me? Uh, they will be coming into the game with a bit of confidence. 1-0 uh, victory against Leeds last time out. Obviously, <clears throat> uh, Newcastle got slapped by United 3-1. Uh, since a 4-1 victory in April 2011, Newcastle are winless in their last four home league games with, against Wolves. Two draws and two defeats. Of all the Premier League fixtures to have been played at least 10 times, Newcastle versus Wolves has seen the highest percentage of games finish in a draw. 73, 73%. That's 8 out of 11. Each of their last four league meetings between the sides have finished 1-1. Both teams have scored in all 11 Premier League meetings between Newcastle and Wolves, making it the most played fixture in the competition in which neither side has kept a clean sheet. 
Newcastle have had a player sent off in each of their last three home games against Wolves. Vernon Anita in 2016, DeAndre Led, uh, Yedlin in, 20, uh, in December 2018, and Sean Longstaff in October 2019. And finally, Newcastle have lost eight of their last 10 Premier League games, winning the other two. Indeed, the Magpies have lost more league games in 2021 than any other Premier League side. Eight. And I think they're about to lose another. I'm yep, going for I'm, Wolves. Yeah, I'm going Wolves too. Yep. And then the final game, London Derby, Crystal Palace taking on Fulham. Uh, Palace coming off um, a great win in the Derby. 2-1, last minute goal from Benteke. Fulham uh, beating Sheffield United 1-0 at Craven Cottage. Uh, Adama Lookman with the goal. A good goal from him, to be honest, blood. Took the finish well, fam. You understand? Uh, Crystal Palace have won each of their last each of their last three Premier League games against Fulham only versus Burnley, January 18, January 2018, November 2019, Leicester, December 2017, February 2019, and Stoke, March 2015, and September 2016. Have they ever won four consecutive meetings in the competition? Fulham have never previously lost four consecutive league matches with Crystal Palace. They last avoided defeat to the Eagles in the Premier League in May 2014, 1-1. And they last beat them in the competition in October 2013, 4-1. Only against Wimbledon have Crystal Palace ever won four or more consecutive top flight London derby meetings, beating them five times in a row from September 1989 to August 1991 under Steve Koppel, who actually made Ian Wright, but it's self Steve Koppel. Uh, Crystal Palace won their last... Premier League match against Brighton, 2-1. The Eagles had just three shots in the match while facing 25 in return. Managed just two touches in the opposition box and had just 25.5% of, of the possession. And finally, Fulham are unbeaten in their last six Premier League away matches, although five have ended level with one win. They have never gone seven such matches unbeaten in the competition. Uh... I'm going to go with the draw for this one. No, I was no. thinking draw, but I'm more edging to Palace. No, no draw for, for me for this yeah, one. Yeah, I'll go for a draw still. You get me? I'll go for a draw. So, that is the review and the preview and even a little cheeky interview with my boy Cole. You get me? You can see Zar loving life. You understand? We are very happy, both of us, through to the next round. Uh, obviously, we recorded this on Thursday, so we don't know who we've drawn. Hopefully, we avoid the big guns and we get a little team. Like I said, I want Rangers. Young boys. He wants, he wants young boys. <laughs> they ute them. They ute them. You get me? <laughs> but big up yourself, Zah, every week, my brother. Big up my bro, Jets on the buttons. And like I say every week to the people, them, stay safe and wash them fucking hands, blood. <laughs>